Here's game 10 of the final of the Women's World Chess Championship. Scores level. It's very tense indeed. In this game, Zhu Wenjun, the champion, had white. Lei Ting Jie, the challenger, black. Let's see what happened. Knight f3. A cagey start. It's an English. Might well transpose into something else. Oh, e3. Well, that's quite trendy. Well, you never know. We might go into some kind of queen's pawn game with d4. Let's have a look. So d4 is possible here. b3. Well, we still might go into a, some kind of d4 opening. c5. Leighton GA claims some center. Knight c6. And now c takes d5. Now you can play knight takes d5, but very often white is able to generate some nice play on these diagonals. So e takes d5 is the classical move. Bishop e2. Now here, of course, it's possible to play bishop d6, and then, then d4 would happen. Um, black could try to exploit the fact that white hasn't put this pawn in the middle by playing d4 here. But that can lead to a bit of trouble, actually, after bishop b5. This one is vulnerable. Black has made too many poor moves. Lay plays an interesting move. a6. Now, normally, I am a big critic of these little pawn moves at the side of the board. This one is actually quite useful. Black can get away with it here, and the reason is this, because if white castles, then it's actually possible to play d4. There's no bishop b5 here, and that one blocks out this bishop. This is reasonable for black. And there's another reason. It's kind of a waiting move as well, because, well, now that this is, you could say, a, a kind of threat, then white plays d4. That's normal. And black exchanges on d4. This is the game continuation. Now, e takes d4 is dreadful. Well, it's just probably equal. Blocks the bishop. So knight takes d4. And we have this absolute typical isolated queen's pawn position. But notice this bishop hasn't moved yet. So Lay throws in this rather disruptive check. If this check is blocked with the knight, then knight e4 is problematic for white, or knight d2, then you can exchange here and play knight e4. That is highly problematic with this pin. So the best move after bishop b4 check is to play bishop c3. And the bishop just drops back, and actually this bishop isn't so well placed on c3. This is the point, but well, the bishop is very well placed on this diagonal, pointing down towards the king side. And you can see that that pawn move is very useful because it takes away the b5 square. So black never has to worry about knight b5 happening. And of course, this is an absolutely normal move in this kind of IQP position. It kind of, uh, yeah, ruling out knight b5 gives that bishop some cover. And sometimes, you know, this, the queen ends up on one of these squares as well, and it won't be hit. So it's a, a, a finesse, this a6 and then the bishop b4 check. Knight d2, that's important to stop knight e4. And both sides castle. And rook e8. That is where the rook belongs in these positions, on the semi-open file. And now, Ju just put the bishop back on b2. Yeah, it's not in a good position here. Um, I, I mean, a couple of things. It blocks the c-file. Um, if, let's say, knight here, then black gains time against the bishop. And sometimes even bishop a3 is possible to hit a rook coming to c1. So bishop b2, just tucking it back again makes a lot of sense. Now we have a completely standard IQP position, isolated queen's pawn. 
I've always really enjoyed playing on the side of the Ice Age Queen's Pawn because I like the space that that gives black. One of my recommendations in my anti Sicilians course um, against the the Alapin 2c3 uh, goes for an e6 and d5 and goes for this isolated queen's pawn position with with a pawn pawn over here. But anyway, um, I always really like going for them because it gives you space and that gives you the possibility to take the initiative. And how often does white actually gang up on this pawn? Very rarely. Only if black plays really badly, basically. So yeah, I feel very comfortable on the, the side with the IQP. I like the initiative. Now, Lay plays pretty standard move. Just bishop d7. Preparing to bring the rook into play. Perhaps on c8. Perhaps on d8 even. It's another way to play this position. Well, several ways. But... I mean, it seems to me that black can just exchange here and play bishop f5. Very straightforward way of playing. You see, in this position, that bishop, you could say, is well, not exactly a problem piece. I mean, lay played it to d7, but it doesn't have a really good square to move to along this diagonal. However, exchanging and playing bishop by f5, very straightforward way to play. This is a beautiful diagonal for the bishop. You can see how white's queen is restricted. Now that's a bit of a problem. So it's not so simple to connect the rooks easily. Well, the queen is a bit restricted. And well, black is going to be able to build up very easily. Queen e7, rook d8. And at some moment, knight e4 will come as well. But bishop d7 just holds a bit more tension. And that's absolutely fine as well. How should white develop here? It's not so easy. As I said, that queen, the position of the queen is, is a little bit problematic. You don't want to put it on c2. That's on the semi-open file. You can take here, or, or the open file. You could take here, but that strengthens the center. And then you could go queen c2. That's reasonable, but black is always going to have some attacking chances on the king side. And even on the queen side, this is very logical as well. So don't think black has any real difficulties. So Jew played knight f3, which is quite nice. You know, bolsters the knight, also protects the king side. But it does leave the outpost on e4 available for that knight. And that's a lovely position. Um, for example, if rook c1, okay, normal move, simply queen f6, and the queen is able to activate on the king side. And, you know, I hate to be in this kind of position with white. Suddenly black has the attack. And I repeat, what is the problem with that pawn on d5? Very hard to attack it. Well, Juwen Jun was obviously a bit rattled. Um, and she spent just over 24 minutes in this position. And after 24 minutes, she came up with knight d2. Moving the knight back, she just wants to exchange this one off. Um, I mean, that knight could just move back, although well, it's a pity to, to retreat. But lay plate knight takes d4. And then she played rook e6. So uh, an aggressive continuation. To my eyes, very logical because white's kingside lacks protection. I mean, those four pawns are very nice, but there are no pieces there. And once that rook swings to g6 or h6, in combination with the bishops, the knight and the queen, well, that's a very natural attacking plan. And you can see how the space that black has conquered with that pawn allows the pieces to move up to decent positions. Jude decided to, well, not mess around here. She wasn't going to entertain any of these uh, attacking chances. Now that bishop is blocked out, 
and the pawn covers some key squares, well, it's going to be hard for black to generate any attack. Nevertheless, f4, yes, it does block that one out, but it leaves that pawn a little bit weaker. Leaves the king, you know, I won't say exposed, not at the moment anyway, um, but it opens up a little bit. It's clear that that bishop on d4 is a beautiful piece. You know, that just kind of cements white's structure. Therefore, Lay's next move, bishop c5, is very logical. Exchange that one off, and white's structure is just a bit weaker. But it leads after, well, after this move, there's a forced sequence that leads to more exchanges. So if, if rook takes, then of course bishop takes bishop wins a piece. So bishop takes bishop, not pawn takes. That's a nice structure for black. The rook will just come here and pressurize. So queen takes d4, rook takes. Attacking the queen, you can see we've got two weak pawns here. Queen takes pawn and rook takes pawn on e3. So we've got a lot of wood cleared in the middle of the board. And just for a moment, white has some activity. That bishop was attacked. It's moved here. And white threatens one, two pawns. Is that a problem for black? Not really. Um, because that pawn move f4 has weakened white's king. Not just along this diagonal, but along the second rank as well. And actually, lay plays accurately here. Rook e7, so that protects f7. The pawn is taken, but black has excellent compensation here. Queen is attacked. It moves back. Rook d7, attacks the queen. Queen e5. Check. There we go. The queen enters the game with tempo. It would be nice if white could actually just replay, just uh, retreat the pawn to f2, but no. King's got to go in the corner. Bishop takes, pawn takes, so that's messed up white structure. So that's a nice little pawn now. Queen c6 threatens the pawn. Rook e1 threatens a mate, so h6 gives the king an escape square. Rook c1 defends the pawn. And rook d8. Well, we can we can just stop here after after all those little threats, and we can take stock. White is a pawn up, but black's pieces are so well coordinated. And white's second rank and white's first rank are vulnerable. This rook just wants to steam down here and attack g2, and attack that one as well. And these rooks can't go too far up the board. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a problem on the back rank, basically. So white has to be prudent here. Trying to hang on to this extra pawn will just lead to problems. So h3, very sensible, giving the king an escape square. Rook d2, threatening mate. So rook e2. Rook d1 check, exchange of rooks, the king steps up, and black has won the pawn back. However, we've had more exchanges, the pawn structure is virtually symmetrical, so the position has just burnt out. And very sensibly, Zhu Wenjun decided just to exchange the queens, and that means that the king has no difficulties at all and you can see we've landed in a very even rook and pawn endgame and there were more pawn exchanges after this and this led inevitably to a repetition and a draw so there we are tenth game drawn the match is still level um, not too much happened in that game. Zhu Wenjun played a cautious opening. Once again, Lei seemed to be very well booked up. Um, 
if that's not an out outmoded expression. Um, they knew her stuff very well and I think equalised very easily. In general, I think these IQP positions don't really present black with any difficulties. Um, so, yeah, and, and when things got a bit... Um, bit sharp then knight d2 exchanging off pieces was was probably very prudent so we've got two more games to go the question is will one of the players rock the boat and really go for it in one of these last two games or are they going to play safety first in which case we might just be drifting into the tie break which will consist of four rapid play games anyway two games to go let's see what happens if you're not a subscriber to the channel do click that subscribe button i'm inching towards 100k I'd like to get there at some point. Thanks for watching.